Okay, so here's another example of an integral that we will evaluate using a trigonometric substitution. What's interesting now is that in our previous video, we had an indefinite integral, and then we have a definite integral. And as it turns out, definite integrals, when making a trigonometric substitution, are simpler, as once we go in terms of theta, we will also change the bounds of integration, and we will not have to go back in terms of x, and this will save us a bit of work. So here the question is, well, what is our choice of trigonometric substitution? Well, we have 4 minus x squared here. It's almost 1 minus x squared, and of course if this was 1 minus x squared, we would simply let x be sine of theta. But if that's our choice, then we'll have your 4 minus sine squared, and then we're kind of stuck because we need this to be a 1 minus cos squared, 1 minus sine squared, sorry, which will then become a cos squared, which will cancel the square root. Well, how can we get rid of this 4? Well, if in the x squared there was a factor of 4 also, then we could factor 4, and we'd have 1 minus sine squared. Well, what squared gives 4? The answer, of course, is 2. And so now our choice is not simply x is sine theta, but x is 2 times sine theta. So let's see what happens now. Of course, we need our differential, dx. Well, so x equals 2 sine theta, so take the differential on both sides. The differential of x, of course, is dx. Equals the differential of 2 sine theta will be 2 cos theta times, of course, d theta. And now let's simplify our denominator. So we have 4 minus x squared is 4 minus, if you square 2 sine, you get 4 sine squared. You can factor out the 4, and you'll have 1 minus sine squared of theta. But 1 minus sine squared theta is cos squared. And now let's take the power of 3 over 2 onto 4 minus x squared. So we have 4 minus x squared to the 3 half equals 4 times cos squared to the power of 3 over 2. And if we distribute on both terms, 4 to the 3 half, take the square root first, the root of 4 is 2, 2 cubed is 8, so we have 8, check. Cos squared, take the square root first, which gives you cos, cos cubed. So now we have our dx, 2 cos theta d theta. We have our denominator, which is simply 8 cos cubed of theta, but we're missing the bounds of integration, right? Once we make this substitution, the integral will become in terms of theta, and so the bounds must be in terms of theta, as those bounds are in terms of x. This is x equals 0, x equals 1. Well, let's ask when x is 0 and 1, what is the value of theta? So if x is 0, let's plug it in here. So we'll have 0 equals 2 sine theta. But if 2 sine theta is 0, then sine of theta is 0. And of course, sine of theta is 0 when theta is 0. So we have our new bound of integration, which coincidentally stays 0. What about when x is 1? Then we'll have 1 equals 2 sine theta. Divide by 2 on both sides, and you'll have that sine of theta equals 1 over 2. And if you recall, sine is 1 half when the angle is pi over 6. So theta is pi over 6 now. And now we're good to go. We have every part of the integral, including the bounds of integration, now in terms of theta. So if I call this i, then what do we have? i equals 
the integral of on top we only have dx which is 2 cos theta d theta over 4 minus x squared to the 3 half which we know is 8 cos cubed of theta and of course we need to change our bounds of integration when x was 0 theta is also 0 but when x was 1 theta is pi over 6 and now everything that was in terms of x has been replaced in terms of theta and so we can forget now everything we've done and now evaluate this definite integral as both are equal so let's simplify a little bit 2 over 8 is 1 quarter we can factor this outside as it is a constant multiple and if you look here we have cos over cos cubed if you cancel one of the cosines you're left with 1 over cos squared well how do we evaluate this definite integral well 1 over cos squared is secant squared so we have a quarter the integral from 0 to pi over 6 of secant squared theta d theta and this integral is trivial right we are asking for a function whose derivative is secant squared that is of course simply tangent so we have a quarter tangent of theta and we evaluate from 0 to pi over 6 and let's see what that gives us we can leave the 1 over 4 outside as it is a scalar multiple and so we'll have tangent of pi over 6 minus tangent of 0 and now let's simplify tangent of course is sine over cosine so now what we have is sine of pi over 6 over cos of pi over 6 minus sine of 0 over cos of 0 equals a quarter sine of pi over 6 we know is 1 half cos of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2 minus sine of 0 is 0 over cos of 0 which is 1 and now we're left with a quarter now you have one half and of course 0 over 1 is 0 so all we're left with is a quarter times this expression so a quarter times one half times if you divide by a fraction you multiply by the reciprocal so you'll multiply by 2 over root of 3 we can cancel 2 over 2 which we now have 1 over 4 times 1 over root of 3 we can rationalize by multiplying top and bottom by root of 3 which gives us well on the top root of 3 over root of 3 times root of 3 is 3 times 4 is 12 so we have finally root of 3 over 12 and that's it now again looking at the original integral we can see that this integral is the same as this trigonometric integral from our trig substitution and the final answer is root 3 over 12 now again I want to make a very short comment here we use the trigonometric substitution and again you can try using a simple u substitution and it fails miserably but keep in mind only use a trigonometric substitution if you absolutely have no other options if I gave you the exact same integral with an x or an x cubed then of course you could make the same trick, su trick substitution which would work but you can do much simpler by making a simple u substitution
right? In this case, you can see that if you differentiate 4 minus x squared, you get negative 2x. 2 is your numerator, x. So here, if you let u be 4 minus x squared, take the differential on both sides, so du will be the differential of 4 minus x squared, which will be negative 2x dx. You can, of course, then solve for your x dx, and you'll have a very simple integral coming from a simple u substitution. If you had, instead of an x and x cubed on the numerator, you could pull out the same u substitution by simply factoring out of the x cubed an x. And again, in the end, you'll have everything will be the same except for the x squared, which we will replace as 4 minus u. And so you see, integration problems are very sensitive. With an x or an x cubed, or any other odd power of x for that matter, these integrals can be tackled with a simple u substitution. And you can try and complete both just for fun. But if I change the x or the x cubed for a 1 or an x squared, then you have to make a trick substitution as a u substitution will fail. So the conclusion is only ever use a trigonometric substitution if you have no other option being of course a simple u substitution. And that's it.